anxiety and how to tame them. We have all been here before. During the darkest hours of the COVID-19 pandemic, the strict limitations created an uneasy set of feelings. As we were locked inside our homes, we worried about the well-being of our parents and relatives inside theirs. We feared that our boss could fire us at any moment's notice because of the worsening economy. Even now, when the light at the end of this pandemic tunnel is already seen, we haven't completely forgotten the level of anxiety it once caused. Anxiety is a normal part of our life. Even if the pandemic did not happen, we are naturally afraid of bears chasing us while cycling through the woods, nervous when we have to deliver a yearly speech, or defend our thesis in front of high-profile professors, or worry about being on an aeroplane at height. For a healthy person, the feeling will subside as he assesses the situation and decides that he is safe. But for people with anxiety disorder, this feeling is overwhelming, irrational, and long-lasting and perhaps equally the same as in a near-death experience. This disorder is about 50% more prevalent in women than men and can affect any age, starting from six years old. Anxiety has some common forms. Some examples are generalized anxiety disorder. The person with this type of anxiety problem fears normal daily things, such as grades, jobs, finance, or family. But the fear and worry carry on every day for at least six months, affecting job performance, daily activities, and more. The quality of sleep declines sharply, and the patient becomes restless, easily fatigued, and irritable. In addition, the patient suffers poor concentration and occasional absence of mind. Panic disorder. In this type, a person may have a panic attack, even without any apparent reason. It triggers symptoms similar to a heart attack, such as racing heart, stomach pain, nausea, and numb hands, and the sufferer may falsely believe so. The patient worries constantly about when the next attack will happen, which disturbs the normal daily activities. This, in turn, creates a tendency to avoid places or situations where the patient underwent the previous attack. A person with a phobia has a specific trigger for his or her anxiety. The phobia or fear is excessively stronger than the actual threat or risk and can happen without foundation at all. It is not only caused by situations such as being at height or narrow places. Flying in a small cabin aircraft is the perfect example for it. But it can also be manifested in ideas such as fear of interaction with people or social phobia or things that have clusters of small holes, known as trypophobia. Separation anxiety disorder is one of the most common disorders in children. This happens when a kid feels really anxious when he is separated from his loved one, like his mum and dad. It is normal for a kid under three years old to cling excessively to his parents. But kids older than three usually do not do that. It can also manifest in having nightmares about separations or fear that his parents may be harmed. Consult with medical professionals to have an accurate assessment because various forms of anxiety can give different impacts from person to person. On the far end of the anxiety spectrum, an extreme case of anxiety disorder can be mentally and physically debilitating. It significantly interrupts a person's ability to function. Mild distress, however, not so much. You may be experiencing subclinical symptoms similar to those with anxiety disorder, but can still do quite well in society, manage your daily activities, and perform excellently in your career. A high-functioning anxiety. Some of the most common signs of an anxiety disorder include restlessness, sleep disturbance, uncontrollable feelings of worry, cancelling plans at the last moment. Furthermore, mental illness can physically manifest into trembles, muscle tension or aches, fatigue and excessive sweating. Past studies have also demonstrated the correlation between gastrointestinal problems and anxiety due to the brain-gut connection, the same connection that releases butterflies in your tummy when you get nervous. People with anxiety are found to be having more instances of diarrhea, constipation or GERD. So when all other options related to your stomach problem have run out, your doctor may need to examine your mental health. Similar to most mental illnesses, anxiety also has some risk factors that could increase the risk of someone developing an anxiety disorder. Genetics. If any of the patient's biological relatives has anxiety, the chance for him or her to develop anxiety increases two to six times higher. The younger the patient, the more likely it is to be hereditary. 
negative or traumatic previous events, such as bullying during childhood or losing an important figure in life, buildup of stress and pressure from small events in our daily life. Some medications, such as bronchodilators, and certain diseases such as thyroid problems or heart arrhythmia may have anxiety as a side effect. To be able to overcome anxiety, first people need to acknowledge that they have a mental problem. Contact the doctor and do not self-diagnose. Psychological therapy, such as cognitive behavioral therapy, helps to change the patient's mindset. The patient needs to accept that problems and stresses are a part of daily life, so there is no need to constantly overreact to everything. Another type of therapy, exposure therapy, works by exposing the patient to the anxiety source to show that it has less harm than imagined and that the patient can deal with it. They may also be prescribed antidepressant medications, such as SSRI and tricyclic drugs, hypertension medications such as beta blockers, and benzodiazepines if deemed necessary. Now, we will continue to explain things that you can do to help yourself from anxiety. First, we need to remember that a mental disorder is not a sign of how much we fail in life. There are some risk factors for our condition, and most of them are out of our control. Because of this, other people also experience them. As much as 25% of people are having or will be having a mental illness sometime in their life, even if they look okay from outside. So, you're not alone. You should also learn from your past, because you have done this before. The stresses you are currently experiencing right now are similar to what you had when you were younger. The numerous pieces of homework and challenging tests from school, or the pressure when you need to give your first ever presentation in front of the class. Yes, now they're harder, but you've evolved as well, gaining experience along the way. Picture the goal you want to achieve at the end of the road. When you graduate from college or complete your work challenges, you will thank the sleepless nights of study and group works. When you reach your goal, all of the pressure you feel right now will be worth it. Focus on the bigger picture. Finally, remember that our society and the world has survived all matters of adversities. Whether the recent coronavirus pandemic that took many people's lives, or an economic crisis due to war that made people lose jobs and money. So, don't lose hope, except for global warming. We're all doomed about that. To relieve anxiety, spare your time to worry, as it will persist if ignored. Try to write all your worries and fears down in a journal under a set time. In some days, you'll run out of things to write before the time is up. When the worries come again, spoiler, it will, distract yourself. Small tools like a fidget spinner, stress ball, or anxiety ring will help calm the nerves. You need to relax yourself by doing some breathing exercises as well. Likewise, doing physical activities will increase the endorphins in your brain, which will give a boost to your mood and overall happiness. Meaningful physical exercises require you to eat healthy food. Some food like dark chocolate may even help reduce anxiety, while coffee will make it worse. Both go hand in hand with a good and regular sleep, which is hard to commit to if you don't plan for a balanced work. Finish the task the next morning after you have enough sleep and talk to your boss if you feel overwhelmed. Trying a new hobby or routine could also focus your thoughts away from anxiety. New pets, books or trekking, you name it. Games can also help, but do not get too competitive as it can lead to another stress source. Finally, talk to your trusted friends and family about how they're doing in their lives. Sometimes they may give you some insights and a fresh perspective about your problems. Suppressing your anxiety by not overwhelming yourself with negative news and information is a simple step you need to take. Limit yourself to several trusted factual news sources and forget the rest. This applies to your social media use as well. Seeing constant streams of others flexing their achievements and successes may undermine your feeling of contentment and make you overthink. Don't hesitate to press the unfollow and block button in this situation. Also, do not associate every unwell feeling with anxiety or panic attacks. It may not be a big deal, so try to shift your focus to your comfort activity. Do not diagnose yourself. In the end, the tips and guidelines in this video can only help you so much. When things don't seem to get better, the professional healthcare workers can help confirm your conditions and treat you accordingly. Contact them. Thank you for your continuous support especially our valued patrons and members who have been encouraging us to keep producing more quality content.